Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 10th. This was uh, this is going to be a follow-up of Carrier IQ, which I talked to you about before. It's on a lot of Android phones, and also even though it's not activated, it's on the iPhone, according to the last report I gave. Two independent researchers did a little more work at banging at the code, and they have determined, both of them independently, that it's not a keylogger per se, but they are concerned about the amount of information that it does collect itself. Um, evidently they do consider it a root kit and they have both investigated the information and how it's actually being used now and they both do seem to have the same conclusion that the carriers that are using it are only using it for what they say they're using it for. They're only using it for statistics and to actually um, normal use of what the, the network should be um, used for and to make the quality control decisions and things like that. They're not using it, at least at present day, for anything that uh, could be considered nefarious or uh, collecting information that's of a real private nature, but they're still concerned because it has the capacity to do things, and also they're, they're thinking that it may not be as secure as they would like it to be, too, that it could actually be cracked into by third-party applications or a rogue application. So if you want to check this out, this is called threatpost.com and you can read what two independent uh, researchers uh, banging on the code have found out about it but evidently at least the part so far that none of the versions of carrier IQ are actual key loggers they still can tell what sites you've been to and I think they do record the fact of the length of your text messages but um, they see that none of the code actually can actually detect the content of your text Next up, this was sent to me by Rob RC62. This is an entire computer built into a USB thumb drive. This is from foxnews.com, and as usual, I will post the links to the articles down in the bottom in the description. Not so sure about this. Now, um, it appears a lot of people think, well, big deal, you know, they had operating systems and they've had uh, browser apps, portable browser apps on USB thumb drives already which act sometimes much the same way. Uh, the addition in this thing though is it actually has a dual processor full computer in it running the Android system is what they say they're going to come out with and then maybe uh, also add Linux to it but you can actually hook it up to a, either a dumb terminal or you can actually hook this thing up to a television set and since it has an HDMI plug on the one side and a USB plug on the other side you can also add a keyboard and mouse so you do have a full computer system on this little USB thumb drive. I think it may end up being uh, one of those in-between technologies that comes out and might be popular for a short period of time, but with iPhones and other smartphones getting as good as they are, it may be a matter of, if it isn't even already happening, I don't have a smartphone myself, but it may be a matter of the fact that you just walk into your house and push a button and wirelessly connect up your smartphone with your television set anyway, or, or a dumb terminal or something like that. and you know basically that's what this is and the stick is the same capabilities as a powerful smartphone so I'm not really sure if this is something that even if it does catch on for a short period of time I don't think it's really destined to last um, if any of you do have smartphones let me know I would I would think it's pretty trivial just to even uh, if you don't do it wirelessly just to take a, a USB um, wired connection and have your um, smartphone connect up with a television set or a computer display. I would think that would be rather trivial and I'd be surprised if some smartphones can't do that already. So if anybody knows a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments if you have a smartphone that you're already using much in that same way. Here's something interesting from Gizmodo. Uh, anybody wonder what the moon smells like as far as moon dust? What does it actually smell like? Well, at the American Museum of Natural Sciences, they did a, uh, an exhibit and uh, they have a button you can push and for about 10 seconds it'll blast the smell of moon dust and according to the astronauts and according to the people that have uh, went to this museum for the display uh, it smells like spent gunpowder and as a matter of fact one of the Apollo astronauts uh, John Schmidt who flew on Apollo 17 said it actually was bothering his sinuses to the extent they started swelling up so I guess he was showing a little bit of an, an allergy to moon dust but yeah, if you're interested in what moon dust smells like, it smells to him. He said uh, his exact words was, uh, it smells like, well, I think most of the astronauts said it smells like uh, somebody unloaded a, a carbine rifle 
and uh, the smell of spent gunpowder. It's interesting because the majority of what, or at least close to half of what moon dust is made of is actually silicon dioxide glass and the chemical composition of moon dust is nothing like gunpowder even though it smells like it. It's silicon glass combined with iron, calcium, and magnesium bound in minerals such as olivine and pyroxene. So I thought that was kind of interesting. If you're into Christmas carols, it may very well be that the majority of your Christmas carols that you really enjoy were written by Jewish people. This article comes from interfaithfamily.com. Uh, a lot of you probably know that Irving Berlin, who wrote White Christmas, he was um, Jewish, and also Mel Torme, who wrote the Christmas song, he was Jewish. Well, out of this list of 25 songs this guy talks about, it may be as many as half of these songs were actually written, either the lyrics or composed, by Jewish composers. Uh, an interesting one, too, is Johnny Marks, who uh, has three hits that um, I like all of them. Rocking Around the Christmas Tree is one, Holly Jolly Christmas, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. A little interesting story about Irving Berlin is he was actually married to a Catholic woman and celebrated Christmas, although they say he was rather sad because he did lose a son on Christmas Day in the 20s. And last up, remember I've been ragging on the Mythbusters for their sloppy science. Well, most of you have probably heard in the news that Mythbusters actually shot a cannonball through a house, a car, and ended up landing in a guy's minivan. And uh, interestingly enough, it was not Adam and Jamie that were involved in this. It was uh, uh, Tori, Carrie, and uh, Grant that were doing the myth when they did this and got a little bit sloppy. I guess it ricocheted off. Um, I'm going to give you the report from msnbc.com, but you can go on YouTube and just type Mythbusters Space Cannonball, and you're going to see a lot of reports on this. Uh, Jamie and Adam are, they did come out to the scene and actually apologize to the people, and they're going to um, write checks and make everything good. But, yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. If the Mythbusters maybe would uh, have been watching the TDD report for the last two weeks, uh, I kind of criticized them a little bit about getting sloppy in their science. And, uh, yeah, something did happen. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, so... Uh, end up being all good. But that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.